when I was a kid, I was diagnosed with ADHD and I was pretty much immediately put on medication. I just wish that instead of continuously upping my dose of medication that they had taught skills because when I got to college, I still had no ability to actually manage my ADHD symptoms. It was just medication, which isn't managing symptoms, it's just medication. Are doctors over-diagnosing and over-medicating children with ADHD? Yes. The answer is hell yes. But that doesn't mean that among those massive over-diagnoses and over-medications are some that are spot-on correct. We sent Megan's son to Amon Clinics to have a workup and take a look at the brain because we wanted to find out you know, what's really going on with this because this is not a psychological, just behavioral sort of scenario. And we want to talk about what we found out. So Dr. Raymond, what did you learn? So we do a study called Brain SPECT Imaging. And SPECT looks at blood flow and activity. It looks at how the brain works. And it basically shows us three things, good activity, too little, or too much. And then we compare it. We now have a database of 225,000 scans. And, and that would roughly be the largest database uh, in the world. I think so. Yeah. And just saying. <laughs> what we saw compared to his age, his brain is working way too hard. This view, we're looking at the outside surface of this brain. And his brain actually looks pretty healthy on the outside surface. Now, if we go to the next one, red and white are the most active parts of the brain. So blue is average, red is the top 15%, white is the top 8%. So healthy on the left for his age, your son on the right. And if you see all the white toward the top, if you look at the top left image, all that white means his frontal lobes are on fire. And then if you go to the bottom, so just look at the top left image, go to the bottom, his cerebellum looks sort of broken up compared to a healthy brain. So he's not processing and he's getting stuck. Not processing, getting stuck. Things don't go his way, he explodes. And so the goal is to calm down his brain and then activate his cerebellum so he processes better. But if you're on five medicines and he's not dramatically better, it's the wrong cocktail or medicine. So we would ag agree with that. And it doesn't mean, you know, medicine or no medicine. I always tell my patients the goal isn't medicine or no medicine. The goal's your best functioning. Right. And we always want to do it in the least toxic, most effective way. His brain is not signaling him. It's not processing information from the outside, being processed by him, and then he's just saying, man, watch what she does when I do this. That's not the case. What it, causes that? Well, it's just a, it's a matter of how his brain has come together. Why it's that way, it, there could be a lot of reasons and maybe that will inform what to do about it. Maybe it won't. But the important thing is that you know this is very important information as to why he's behaving the way he's behaving. Now, here's the good news. This is all treatable. All of it. You can make the brain much healthier. Because what we saw is he doesn't have a damaged brain. He just has a brain that's not functioning. Right. And so we, if we can balance it, he is going to be so much better. And it's not just medicine, right? I mean, for both of this, it's like, we have to talk about food because food is medicine or food is poison. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.